We cannot wait to share with you the keys to revival we learned in the field this year. Yeah, this thing is happening across the nation and actually demons are flying out of people when it happens. So you don't want to miss this next episode. Do you feel like there is more to your faith than you're experiencing? Is your relationship with God really working? Get ready to be a part of the greatest revival in history. For Jesse and Parker Green, that began on the shore of Huntington Beach, California, as thousands, right in the midst of COVID, came to be baptized and ignited in God's fire. Get ready to be set on fire as God stokes the flames of revival in your life. It's all hands on deck, next on Experience Revival Now, with your hosts, Jesse and Parker Green. Hi, and welcome to Experience Revival Now. We're so excited to have you with us today. And like we talked about, we are going to share with you what we saw in the fields of Kentucky and North Carolina, and what we saw in California in Revival that are keys to this next Great Awakening. I'm so excited to share this with you today. Yeah, the reality is, is across the nation, we're seeing this phenomenon happen. And it's something that all of us have probably experienced in church, but it's like, as if God has put the magnifying glass on this and is amplifying it. And I think it's really significant for this end time harvest and honestly for the return of our King Jesus here on earth, the return of the Messiah. And so I'm so excited to just kind of share our experiences, our real life experiences in the mud, seeing the Holy Spirit move. So what, what have we been seeing, Parker? <laughs> So Matthew 28 says, go into all the world and make disciples, right? Baptizing yeah. them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So like we were talking about in an episode, you may have seen obedience is success. So we just do what that says. And we started to see people baptize. We would give a call to baptism in every single meeting we had. If there were five people there, yeah. we would say, get baptized. If we were doing street ministry, we'd say, get baptized. If we saw thousands of people there, we'd say, get baptized. Today is the day of salvation. And we saw some crazy <laughs> stuff happen when it came to baptisms this year. So let's talk about baptisms a little bit first. Okay. So what is actually happening when someone's getting baptized? Yeah, I think so. Many of you that are watching this, you may have been baptized before, or maybe you know someone that's been baptized. You know, many church services across the country, you make a decision to follow Jesus, and then they have you sign up to be baptized. And basically, they say it's a symbolism of entering into a brand new family and starting a new relationship with Christ. But what we're seeing is something really altogether different. I think what we're experiencing right now in the revival that's happening right now is more like a mikvah baptism. So it's really more like what we saw in the Old Testament. And the mikvah, what it was, was this bath. It was this ancient bath. They would have them set up all outside the temple. And what was really cool, if you actually see some of the pictures, it was like this hole in the ground and they would go down these steps and many times they were in their own clothes and they would go down these steps and they would cleanse and purify themselves before they could enter into a holy place. And I believe that right now God is preparing the nations, the nations, every single nation to be a holy place. And so he's wanting us to be a holy place. He's wanting us to be holy, to be purified to be the temple of God, like scripture says. And so he's wanting us to purify ourselves by being mikvahed and entering into that baptism and coming out with a brand new life. And John the Baptist did baptisms before Jesus started his ministry. Do you want to talk about the significance of that a little bit? Yeah, so John was the precursor to Jesus, right? He's making straight the way of the Lord, and he's doing baptisms for repentance. But what Jesus says after he's baptized, so it's good enough for him, it's good enough for <laughs> us, right? Yeah. After Jesus is baptized, really what Jesus does is brings a baptism of fire. Jesus brings a baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. And then at the end of Matthew 28, he tells us we should go out and baptize people. 
And it's weird because throughout his whole ministry, you don't really see people getting baptized, <laughs> right? He's not dunking people under the water. He's bringing the kingdom of heaven. We're seeing people healed and delivered and all kinds of things. Jesus is a revival in and of himself. Yeah. But what ends up happening in the book of Acts is Peter gets filled with the Holy Spirit along with a, another 120 followers of Jesus. And the first thing that he does is steps out and preaches a message of repentance and 3,000 people get saved. And that's why the Jews were familiar with the mikvah. They know what baptism is. So that's why he could say, get baptized here. And that's why a lot of people think Peter spoke right. at the temple complex because there was actually enough water there, enough mikvahs there for that many people to enter into the kingdom of God. So they're, they're outside the, the temple and then they step into the new temple, which is the people of God that Jesus is building. So it's a big deal. Water baptism is a really big deal. But I think there's like a special emphasis on it right now that I haven't seen my whole life. And the only reason I think that is because of the crazy stuff that's happening when we're baptizing people. Do you want to talk like a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, so this is not just your everyday Sunday service water baptism. I mean, we've baptized people with water bottles in Kentucky. We had five like horse troughs filled with water and mud. And literally during worship, people are running up during worship and just throwing themselves into the baptismal before worship even was really starting. Yep. And it's like the Holy Spirit himself is inviting people in. And when they go into the water, it's not just the symbolic thing of entering into a new family. I believe that supernaturally, God is literally giving them a brand new life. I mean, from the fruit and the evidence of what I'm seeing, demons are coming out of people. It's like the demons can't handle the water. The water's too hot. The fire's too hot for the demons. And so people go in and sometimes they'll resist. They'll hold the side of the pool and they'll say like, no, no, no. But then all of a sudden the person's like, I want to go in. I want to follow Jesus. And as they go in, you see this wrestle happen and they come up and we pray for them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit right there in the tub fills them with fire. And then we hear testimonies of them going out to all of these places and preaching the gospel with power. And I think that that is what we've all been invited to yeah. from Acts until now. And so I, why do you think though that, you know, in America specifically, we're seeing so many people be baptized in these random places, like not inside the church. Well, I think uh, 2020 and now 2021, we're really a shaking for the church. And people are desperate. People are looking for hope. Um, many churches shuttered their doors, um, moved on from ministry. A lot of places, uh, people are just looking for God. They're, they're, they're desperate for anything, really. So when we give a call to repentance, people are responding. People are really responding. And I think it's happening outside because God wants to move in that way. He wants to move amongst people that are hungry and thirsty and desperate for him to do what he wants to do. Right. And what he wants to do is save a nation. What he wants to do is do it one by one by people repenting and following him. Even Peter in Acts says at the end of his sermon, he says, be baptized, repent, be baptized, be saved from this wicked generation, and you will receive the Holy Spirit. It's a battle between residences, right? So the Holy Spirit's coming in, and darkness is leaving, and evil spirits are leaving. And those evil spirits, although they can't hold back the Holy Spirit, they're trying everything they can to get that person's flesh out of the water, because they know once they cross that line, they're in the kingdom and, and they've lost them. Right here in Acts 2, verse 38, Peter replied, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God. And so I think so often in our American Christianity, we're not preaching to people the real gospel. We're not telling people that they can actually live free from sin, that they can actually live a brand new life through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we're actually robbing people in our churches day in and day out of the very power that can transform their life, transform 
transform their families, transform their cities. So right here we see, he says, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God. So when you repent, you basically are just saying, you know what? This is the world's way of doing things. I don't want to live that way any longer. I'm going to actually now turn my direction, take a new path, go a new way and start entering into the way of God, into the way of the kingdom. And then it says after that, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then, okay. I pay attention every time scripture says then, because it almost seems like God himself is giving us a clue to the very thing that you're hoping for. So you want to see the Holy Spirit move in your life. You want to see more of his love, experience more of his power. Well, right here, we see an instruction from Peter who walked with Jesus in the flesh here on earth. He says, when you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, when Jesus becomes your Messiah, the Lord of your life, when you say, I don't want to live this way any longer, forgive me of my sins. When you get baptized, you're going into that water and you come up and he says, from that moment, then, right then, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that gift is available to you right now. If you're watching, I'd encourage you to go find a place to be baptized today. Go find somewhere today. So if you're really looking to be free, if you're really looking to follow Jesus, repent and follow him and make him the Lord of your life. Baptism is one of those steps. You know, in so many countries across the world, everyone's fine. You know, in Southeast Asia, they're fine when they say Jesus is my Lord or Jesus is King, but they're not okay with baptisms. I think it's because there's such a spiritual significance and such a shift in somebody's life to own the fact that their life now belongs to Jesus. If you want to belong to him, if you want a new hope in your life to follow him, then I encourage you find a place to get baptized or we've done this before water bottle over your head, your own bathtub, whatever it takes, find a place and be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And don't be surprised if there's resistance because you're stepping into a brand new life and into a brand new kingdom. So stay tuned. We're going to talk to you next about why demons cannot handle the baptism waters and what happens in the spiritual realm when you decide to go into the water and start a brand new life through Jesus. Stay tuned for more of Experience Revival Now. Log on to thegreens.co to connect with Jesse and Parker Green. Learn more about their powerful ministry. Access anointed teachings by Parker Green. Read their inspiring blogs. Contact them and give them your prayer request. Get anointed resources to help you grow in your passion for revival. Jesse is a compelling revivalist, visionary, and missionary who received a thirst and vision for reaching people that don't yet know Jesus. She passionately believes everyone is qualified and needs to be equipped to share the good news of Jesus so that cities and lives can be transformed. Parker is a church planter and anointed teacher who wants to make and equip disciples and advance the kingdom. He believes every person can live a life fully alive in Jesus and in a church without limits. Get ready to ignite your life and the whole world with God's kingdom. Log on to thegreens.co right now. And now back with Experience Revival Now. Hi, and welcome back. Now we're gonna talk about some of the crazy stuff that we actually saw in Kentucky and North Carolina, and maybe give you some insight into why this is taking place in this great awakening that's happening in the United States right now. So, Jess, why do evil spirits, why do demons hate baptisms? I personally, and uh, just through studying scripture and talking to different prophets that we'll have on this show, um, I honestly believe that the reason why the demonic hates baptisms, hates it more than anything else, is because really it, 
I can't think of another representation of going all in on your faith. You're literally saying, I don't care what I look like. It's a public declaration. And so by you going into those waters, by you saying, you know, I'm willing to die to myself and to pick up my cross and to be resurrected with Christ, that's a serious statement. And you know, I think sometimes we can make a decision to follow Jesus half-heartedly. We could confess with our mouths, but maybe not believe in our hearts that Jesus actually did raise from the dead. And when we go into that baptism water, I think it's that extra step where all of a sudden we're saying, you know, I'm serious about this. And our family, our friends, all the people around us are witnessing it. And obviously the enemy comes to steal from you. He comes to rob from you. He wants to kill you. And the last thing he wants is for you to decide to die to yourself to follow Jesus. And so I think that's why he prevents people from even entering into the water. And so when people go into the water, especially if they've been in the occult or have generational curses and they enter into that water, it's like the demons trying for their last moment to try to keep people out of the kingdom. And you see this spiritual war happen. Um, I'm actually going to open up to you in Mark 5. We see right before Mark 5, Jesus is crossing the Sea of Galilee and there's a giant storm. And many of us know the story of, you know, Jesus casting out the legion of demons, right? But something that I saw as a little clue right before that is the disciples go across the water and they cross the water to get to this demon possessed man. And I find it so interesting that the demon possessed man is isolated on another side of the water. And I believe that sometimes we have to take that journey and to get onto the other side and enter into that new life. And so Jesus himself has gone through that water for your deliverance and he's meeting you on that other side. And the funny thing is, is it says, when the demon possessed man saw him, the word saw is actually this word in Greek called heroa, and it means to see in the spirit. He saw Jesus before he was even there physically. And he said, leave me alone, Jesus, please like don't come anywhere near me because he knew that the power to cast out those demons was on the way. And I'm here to tell you that that power for deliverance is coming for you right now through Jesus Christ. So Parker, can you share some of the the stories from Kentucky? Uh, there's a lot of stories of deliverance from Kentucky, uh, but honestly, what I remember most is this one young girl, actually, she got baptized a couple of times, I think, while she was there. Um, and we had a security team that was doing a great job, but I don't think they'd experienced uh, a move of the spirit like we were seeing or seeing deliverance on the scale that we saw it. I honestly didn't think that was gonna happen on this no. trip. I thought I'd have to go on a missions trip to Africa or something to see <laughs> yeah. deliverance like it was happening in front of us. Yeah. Um, and this young lady, I heard her from probably, you know, a football field away. And the security guy who'd never been around like Holy Spirit filled people like, like this ever looked at me and goes, that's not a person. And so right. we go running over there. He's and, a former Marine guy, yeah. like a big. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what was happening essentially is a few ladies were trying to exercise a demon out of this girl that just got baptized. This demon manifests and they can't hold her down. So I essentially get on top and hold her and she looks into my eyes and that was the first time where I was like, I'm not dealing with a person. I'm dealing with whatever is behind that because the, the level of hatred that thing had for me and everybody around is something I've never experienced before. Wow. And the, the crazy part about it is you think you're gonna do like this macho thing and like go in and like cast <laughs> demons out, but all I felt was this overwhelming compassion for this yeah. girl. She was maybe 110 pounds, yeah. maybe. And she's throwing around five women. And so this demon eventually comes out. This girl starts to get healing over time. And yeah. really, I don't care what doorways let it in. I don't care what windows let it in. I don't care if like a skylight let this demon <laughs> in. That's not what I'm dealing with. I'm dealing with getting that thing out and seeing the Holy Spirit fill that space. 
because all the doorways need to get knocked down. The whole house, it's a tear down rebuild. It's, it's a whole yeah. new life. Yeah. So she needed to be filled with the Holy Spirit, but they hate baptism. They hate it so much because, because people are actually stepping into something new and Jesus is entering into their life with violence. He's entering into their life. And so they're on the surface now. The enemy's out in the open. And that's what's amazing about it. They used to hide in secrets and people's thoughts and things like that. Now, especially with Gen Z and millennials, they're like, I'm depressed. I'm suicidal. I'm <laughs> yeah. self-harming. And you're like, okay, you're probably oppressed by a demon. Right. Well, and if you're watching today and you're struggling with suicidal thoughts, depression, anxiety, I feel like right now, this is a moment where the Holy Spirit is actually allowing you to see this show, to know from God himself that you're not meant to live that way. You know, John 10, 10, so many of us know this scripture where the enemy does come to steal, kill and destroy. But Jesus says that I came so that they may have life and have it to the full, the full abundant life. Jesus died and rose again for you to access him, access the Father, access revelation and the spiritual realm. You're not supposed to sleep all day in bed and wake up in the morning feeling gloomy and wondering if you should kill yourself. You're supposed to be a catalyst of revival. You're supposed to lay hands on people and see them healed. You're supposed to preach the gospel and see people turn to the Lord. This isn't just the work of ministers anymore. This is the work of the saints. And that's why I think we're seeing the rise of suicide rates, depression, especially in the next generation, they're so over medicated that they're not even aware of what's happening around. I mean, we're walking around with our phones and we're totally disengaged in the war that's happening right in front of us. And the enemy is just taking us out in droves. And I think sometimes one of the things I love about baptisms is it's like a shock to your sleeping nature. Yeah. And so if one of the things a revival does is causes awakening, well, that water, like take a cold bath and you're like, whoa, I'm awake. I'm awake. Like I'm alive. I'm here. I'm yeah. present. I'm involved in what's going on. And we're going to pray for you to be delivered at the end of this episode. And I want you right now to even just think about what are things that maybe I'm experiencing in my life that are not from God? Are there ideas or thought patterns that I've agreed with that are not scriptural? And just start writing those things down. And I also want you to just think about maybe friends or family members or people you work with that you know are really struggling and maybe they need to watch this show and you need to share this video with them. And your big act of faith today is gonna be sharing a video with someone that actually sets them free. Because as we pray for you in just a little bit, I know that the Holy Spirit will deliver you. And I know that Jesus will encounter you and you'll experience his love and his power. Parker, can you share about a little bit of your deliverance journey and like walking in freedom yourself? I think a lot of people, maybe if you're even a Christian or a believer wa watching this, you're wondering, can I have a demon? Well, if you've been depressed for a long time, if you find yourself lethargic, if you find some of the things you're doing are out of your control, if you're ever having thoughts that, you know, I should harm myself or I should do this, I really think that you maybe have oppression from a demon. And we, we want to pray for you so you can clean house. Uh, Jesus talks about it. He talks about how, you know, a house gets swept clean. But what you need to do after you get freedom, after that demon leaves, is fill the house with good things. We've talked about it before, but every single day you need to be in the presence of Jesus. Be careful about what your inputs actually are. What are you receiving? What are you believing? What are you agreeing with? Because if you're covered under the blood of Jesus, the only way an evil spirit can have access to you at all is if you agree with an idea. And it starts small and it starts little because the enemy really from the beginning isn't, isn't going to say, I'm so happy today. I'm so happy today. And then he's like, you should kill yourself. And you're like, no, I'm not. I'm super happy. <laughs> he starts with little things and starts to degrade who you are, the image of God that's actually in you. And I want to tell you, no matter where you're at on that scale, there is actually hope for you. 
And I know one time I actually went to a deliverance event, I guess you could call it, yeah, right? it was like a deliverance, deliverance conference. Yeah, so a lot of anger problems, right? And <laughs> still, like, there's still some residue. But the reality <laughs> is um, I went up to the front, and this 90-something-year-old man, he really was that old, older in the forest, man, and he put his hands on me and he said, would you agree with me if I told you maybe this is a spirit? And I'd never heard that before. And just knowing there was something wrong and it was coming from outside of me and invading my space mm. actually gave me a lot of hope that I could shake this thing, that it wasn't just habits, it wasn't just a family trait, it wasn't just my personality, but I had agreed with something that being angry was actually going to protect me. And I started to wallow in that and live in that and agree with that, but you can actually be completely free. And I want to give you faith for that right now because I've seen it this summer, just this summer, hundreds of times. So Jess, do you want to pray for some people Absolutely. over the cameras and see them delivered? Absolutely. Yeah. If you're watching right now, I feel like this is a divine opportunity for you to access more freedom. And this is something you can watch every single day. You know, for me, I was healed of anxiety and suicidal thoughts in a moment. Like the Holy Spirit entered my room and I was healed in a moment. But for depression, I had to agree with God on a daily basis. I had to declare the word of the Lord over myself every day and say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And many people that know me today wouldn't know that I struggled with depression. And that's going to be the story for you that's watching right now. So just open up your hands and put yourself in a posture to receive and just say, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Okay, right now I'm just praying and believing that the Holy Spirit is filling your room, filling your house. Right now you might feel the tangible presence of God right where you're sitting. And right now I just pray that you'd experience the Holy Spirit in your home, that you would feel the love of Jesus filling you. And I command every tormenting spirit, every spirit of depression, suicidal thoughts and anxiety to go right now in Jesus name. Thank you so much for joining and we pray that you experience revival now. We'll see you next time. Log on to thegreens.co right now to get Jesse Green's brand new book, Wildfires, A Field Guide to Supernatural Revival. You will discover how to become fully alive with passion and vision, triumph over the fear of man, inner shame and crippling depression, burn with an authentic love for Jesus, experience the tangible presence of God's love and power, be made ready to become a part of the coming greatest move of the Spirit of God on the earth. I believe that this revival is going to be one of the greatest revivals in history. This revival is going to require all hands on deck. Every single city is going to be ignited with the fire of God. Every single person can be a carrier of this revival fire. This book ignites God's presence in you and will change the trajectory of your life forever. Log on to thegreens.co to get her brand new book right now.